If you take a closer look, you can find out a Japanese logo on the boat and there was also a Mitsubishi logo on the left arm of the UMP suit. And that thing works as a proof that Japan was still racking in some good cash from the USA, selling their high-tech weapons and products, just like they're doing right now. That's why you're the intelligent species here, Scorsby. Got you kai kao ka. This marine biologist reminds me of Dr. Grace Augustine. It's gonna be sick if we get to see this guy again in Avatar Tree joining the Sully team. It will be very awesome. Check your mask, make sure it's tight. I'm good, dumbass. After what Spider had done to the ship, he should be smashed like a Mexican potato with the buttstock of their rifle and yet they're caring about his oxygen supply. You know why? There can be two possible reasons behind that. Spider had a lot of intel that could be of great use to the RDA operatives afterwards. Spider was the biological son of the human form of Miles Scourge and everyone else on the ship had a good knowledge about that, so killing Spider could possibly end in many consequences. <laughs> When Nathayam assaulted on that man, the other marine from behind was pointing his gun towards the wounded one. What the fuck? He should have immediately pointed his gun to Nathayam or any of his associates to the exact opposite side. What an NPC. No! Oh! Nathayam had to die for saving the life of Spider, so the contribution would get even from the side of Spider if he also does something great for the Sully family in Avatar Tree. Tree. Otherwise, the sacrifice for Spider won't make any sense. <laughs> Jake Sully did not cry much during the death of his son and, in Avatar 1, he did not cry at all after seeing the dead body of his twin brother. He was confused throughout the whole time. It's not because he is a cold-hearted person, it's because he doesn't wear his heart on his sleeve. He's an internalizer. In Avatar 1, Niteri took the bow of her father after losing him around the home tree and fought against Miles Scourge and his team. She also took the same bow in Avatar 2 after losing her son Nateam to a fight against the Avatar of Miles Scourge and the team. Can you even imagine the level of pain and hatred? she gathered in a herd from Miles Scorch. You see that wooden stick? This was the weapon of one of those Matkaina people. But where the hell was Tonowari and the other people? It was not like everyone in their family was safeguarded by them. Their daughter, Serea, was still with Jake Sully and they were still in danger. And where the hell did they vanish? Even in the climax scene, the wife of the chief was seen to be pregnant and it means you cannot justify their sudden departure by saying that Ronald's water broke while fighting and they had to go back. It seems more like James Cameron couldn't manage to hold them in the battlefield due to the constraint of his budget and maybe these guys also had acting schedules somewhere else. In Avatar 1, Jake Sully used a couple of grenades on the ship of Miles to weaken his strength. And this time in Avatar 2, he also used a grenade on the ship of Miles to weaken his strength. Is that a coincident? <laughs> And this scene works as a proof that this son of a bitch Lyle is still going to be alive in Avatar Tree. And it won't be a surprise if he kills another animal like an Ilu or Ikran if a new clan is introduced in the third installment of the movie. <laughs> A sense of fear struck in the heart of Spider when he saw Natiri in an outrage because he was the reason why Nateam had to die. So Spider realized from the very beginning that Natiri won't hesitate to make an assault on him to take revenge on the death of her son. <laughs> And if you know this girl, you should also know that she never had any kind of affection for Spider for being the son of a butcher who killed her family and tribe members. One of them. <laughs> Why was the psychopath giving a thirsty smile to Jake Sully? He wanted a fat dick? Nah. He just wanted to say, even if I die in this ship, I won't be dying without you, Jake son of a bitch. Jake was about to die due to suffocation in Avatar 1 and this time he also had a near-death experience due to the lack of oxygen supply to his lungs. Is that a coincident? Come on you son of a bitch! Imagine how much of an ill-fated person you are that your son calls you son of a bitch for your sins. Miles really deserved that kind of treatment from his son. Dad, just breathe! Get to him! No, that is Lord. The first word of Jake after getting his consciousness back was Nathayam because his mind was still failing to process and accept what happened to his son recently. The way of water has no beginning and no end. The way of water has no beginning and no end. Yeah. <laughs> 
In Avatar 1, the training of Natiri saved the life of Jake Sully, and in Avatar 2, the training of Loak's lover also helped him and Jake to save their lives. This movie is a living proof of how significant your soulmate can be in your personal and professional life, unlike the so-called hookup culture who are busy drowning into dick sands and switching their bedroom mates more than the number of their bed sheets. She gives the fact that these communication devices are actually working underwater is a real deal. Thank you. Payakan saved the life of Loak twice in the movie and Jake Sully once in the movie. He was also the first person to strike the ship of Miles in the climax scene, saving the life of Jake Sully one more time. If this whale doesn't get a warm reception and a lot of love from the Mutkaina people in Avatar 3, it would be very unfair. Payakan deserves to be treated like a family member. I see you. He said the exact same thing in Avatar 1 after being saved by Natiri. I see you. Is that a coincident? A son for a son. I'm just wondering what the hell is gonna happen when Natiri and Jake will find out that Miles Scourge was rescued by Spider. Especially I'm wondering about the reaction from Natiri. Every song chord must have a last beat. Every song card must have a last beat, and it means every person must have an ending. It doesn't mean that his life is meaningless, it means his life must come to an end due to the flow of nature. Just like every song card may have multiple beats, but the card still ends on the other side. Nathayam had many ups and downs, many stories in his life, but it still ended like everyone else. <laughs> When everyone else was grieving for Nathayam, Kiwi was holding the hand of Spider to console him as he was the reason behind the death of Nathayam. Loak and the others could safely go back to the village if they did not have to turn back to rescue Spider from the ship. Come on bro, we can't leave him. <sighs> no! This girl Seria was still crying after the death of Nateam and she cried the most among the Madkaina people. It really shows how much of a caring person she was unlike her bitch mother. I would love to see more of this girl in Avatar 3. The ending of Avatar 2 was with the eyes opening scene of Jake Sully and the same thing happened during the end of Avatar 1. Coincident? Sully's raids are becoming bolder and more frequent. This scene over here is actually the scene from Avatar 1 when Sute destroyed the bulldozers after RDA destroyed the voice tree near which Jake Sully and Nativi got physical. And this guy on the screen was actually human Lyle. Talk to me, Lyle. It looks like they hit with banshees first. No, no. When Jake and his family members were getting into their new home in Alawutan, a small kid was rushing to see them but the mother stopped the kid immediately because the Sully family was tagged as demon blood by the Sahik, so the people of Matkaina possessed mixed feelings about them. They have demon blood! This is great. It's nice, right? Natiri dropped the bag out of surprise because she was never used to living like a civilian in her life. Living in such a small home was not even in the wildest of her dreams. Okay. Look at the teeth of Kiri. It seems like she had no interest in brushing her teeth. Norm Spellman was the only person who was seen to be brushing his teeth. I'm right here. What's up, bro? In the days of the first songs. Tonowari was talking about the days of the first songs in the movie, and in Avatar 1, Natiri was also seen to be talking about the days of the first songs. This only happened five since the time of the first songs. What does it mean? The time of the first songs refers to the first connection of the Navi community to Ewa, their spiritual deity. It was the first time when the Navi community understood the presence of a higher level of consciousness among them, which was the Ewa tree. Strongheart. Strongheart. In Avatar 1, Natiri had a thumb of Jake Sully on her chest, which was a message from Jake to Natiri to remind her to keep a strong heart because she was suffering from the trauma of her father's death. And in Avatar 2, Jake had directly put his thumb on the chest of Natiri to remind her the same thing as she was again suffering from the trauma of her son's death. Coincident? It would be very cool if this broken bow of Natiri gets repaired in Avatar 3 and used for killing the demons that are still left to be dead. It would be even more fun if Jake Sully and his team go back and invade the Bridgehead City. It would be a massive action scene. Stay together, okay? Yes. Stay together! Does it remind you of something? The bump of the ship saved the life of Jake Sully twice in the movie. The first time when it got hit by the Payakan. Ah! 
and the second time being hit on the ground. How many of you have noticed that thing? Stay with him. No! When Loak was leaving for the ship, the time of the movie was 2 hours and 36 minutes, and Loak was seen to be reaching them at around 2 hours and 48 minutes into the movie. So, he took 13 fucking minutes to reach over there? Let's say the time was 5 minutes as many events happened at the same time, but 5 fucking minutes for a 30 second route? He should be present a long time ago. That's when he was needed the most. There was a fish known for giving breath underwater which was attached on the back of Kiri and she was seen to be controlling the baby fishes with a gesture. What was the connection between them? There was another scene like that in the past. Kiri was actually connected with those small fishes using a biological wireless network. It was depicted as Flux Vortex in Avatar 1. See the Flux Vortex in these false color images? Yeah, that's what messes up my instruments. And we have seen the same kind of biological wireless network between humans and their avatars with the help of Link Unit. This is the same kind of biological wireless message which comes from the spiritual Ewa tree and the Sahiks have been depicted to be capable of understanding this message. The same kind of wireless message also instigated the animals in Pandora by the Ewa tree to fight against humans in the climax of Avatar 1. Why is there a golden color neural extension inside the mouth of Payakan? And why did Loak bond with the Payakan using the golden cue when he could also do the same thing using one of the two cues outside? The outer cues are actually for navigation and sensing the physical feelings of the Payakan, but the internal cue was actually for tapping into the memories and psychodynamics of the Payakan. Without that, it was almost impossible to find out why he was outcast. Three tours Nigeria, not a scratch. I come out here day one. On the first day on Pandora, Miles Scorch was assaulted by a Thanator and got a permanent scar to the right side of his face and head. And in Avatar 2, you can also get to see three stripes on the skull of Miles Scorch. I must say that the VFX team of Avatar is going nuts with their detailing nowadays. These are the powerful actors and actresses who also got casted in the previous movies of James Cameron alongside the Avatar franchise. So, can we expect Arnold Schwarzenegger, Christian Bale, Sylvester Stallone and Leonardo DiCaprio in the aftermath installments of the Avatar franchise? Whatever. Don't even remember. As Spider and Kiri are not brothers and sisters, is there any chance we can get to see Spider having his own Avatar and falling in love with Kiri? Don't take it seriously though. I'm just getting a stepsister vibe from this. Who's the mighty warrior? Come on, say it. Is there any way the memories of Nateyam can be transferred from the Ewa tree to any DNA pendrive shown previously in Avatar 2 and then used that memory for making another avatar of Nateyam just like the members of the Project Phoenix were made? I mean, it might be possible, right? It can turn out to be the biggest gift in the life of Nateri and Jake Sully. By the way, Jake Sully, Nateri and Kiri had a communication with their dead family members through the Ewa tree. But the question is, how does the Ewa tree have biological and psychological information about the demised people? In order to overlook the memory of someone, you must have to tap into the memories of that person with the help of the Ewa tree and the entire physical body of your desired person must be connected in the past with the roots of the Ewa tree, whether dead or alive. You should also keep in mind that connection with Ewa just through the biological linker of the body is never going to be enough. Also, this kind of memory overlooking process is not going to be possible with the help of a voice tree because the voice trees are limited to providing them with the voices of the dead and alive people who bonded with the tree in the past and the voices actually sounds very unintelligible the majority of the times. They live, Jake. And the Navi can access it. They can upload and download data. Memories. Also, I need to tell you that an alive person will definitely die if his entire body is connected with the roots of the Ewa tree because the spiritual Ewa tree will just simply cut and paste all the neural connections of the person to his avatar body. The Great Mother may choose to save all that she is in this body. Otherwise, the biological information will be translocated to the personal data bank of the Ewa tree. I guess James Cameron got that idea from the reinstallation process of Windows. Because if you reinstall your Windows from one drive to another, the first drive becomes useless and the second drive becomes the C drive. Alright, that's enough. I'm thinking too much right now.